Hello my people with thick asses but even thicker hearts. What is up? Today as well as this whole week and to the week to come is over 30 degrees Celsius, which is over 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And I don't have AC in either my house or the place I work and so I'm very sweaty, I am melting. It is not the time for a high energy, high production video. I'm gonna do a Q&A. These are all questions you guys sent me on Instagram, so here we go. What color slash style of your hair has been your most favorite thus far and why? Honestly, it really depends. I mean, right now in my life, I feel the most me and the most comfortable with brown hair. And I'll likely go back to that and get rid of the pink bangs whenever this grows out a little bit more. I also think aesthetically, I look the best with orange hair. When I first did orange before my mullet, it was just straight mini bangs. I had really long, thick orange hair. I think that one looked the best on me, but it also made me feel uncomfortable to exist. I don't know if you know this, but orange hair is very fetishized, especially amongst older men. And so I would continuously, like minimum once a week, get an old man inquiring about my hair. I remember the one day I was at work and this old dude came up to me and was like, I really like your hair. And so I said, thanks. And he said, no, I really like your hair. And I was like, he was asking every question on the moon from, is your mom a redhead to, does the carpet match the drapes? I was like, it's noon and I'm at work. The thing is, as soon as I told this guy, I dyed my hair this way, instantly not interested. Like I'm pretty sure what he said was, oh, that's unfortunate and then walked away. So like aesthetically, I loved that look, but it got, I was, yeah. Was not a fan of the male response. But as another color, I had emerald green at some point, and it was right after I'd shaved my head and grown it out. I had just the simple middle part, and it was about chin length. The most beautiful green ever. I loved it. But in practicality, it wasn't the best because I like using green screens in my filmography, and I couldn't because it would make me bald. So yeah, like one of those three colors. Right now, I really like brown. I loved the orange in terms of how it looked. I loved the green in terms of how I felt with it, but it really just depends. Depends on the mood. What's something that others think is silly that you like doing? I love this question because I'm pretty sure the person who asked me this has made fun of me for this thing, but a bitch be wishing. If there's an opportunity to make a wish, I'm doing it. 1111 pops up on the clock, wish time. I see a dandelion fluff on the ground, making a wish. There's an eyelash on someone's face, I am plucking it, wishing. If there's a candle, wishing. I love making wishes and I've been made fun of it from friends and family members and I know it's juvenile but I will not stop. Do you have any advice for what to do when you wake up hating how you look? As someone with body dysmorphia I definitely do. My body dysmorphia is a bit more acute but there are a lot of days where I wake up and I look in the mirror and I genuinely cannot tell what I look like. I, I feel distorted. I feel like I've been put in a carnival crazy mirror. I feel uncomfortable in my skin. I don't feel attractive. Don't feel like I look any of the ways I want to look. And so the thing I've done to solve this is on the days I'm not feeling like that, on days where I'm between decent and doing great, I pick four outfits that I know for sure I look hot as fuck in. When it comes to hating how you look, a lot of it comes down to your features and your body, everything with your physical shell, and you can't change that, you know? Not in a day. I know there's surgeries and whatnot, and that's a different topic. In the practicality of things, when you wake up hating how you look, you cannot change what you see. What you can change, though, is your self-expression and the biggest form of that is fashion. So on the days where I'm feeling between decent and great, I find clothes that make me feel super confident that no matter what my hair looks like, my makeup looks like, I feel like it's flattering on me. Not even necessarily flattering in a, oh, it hugs my curves in the right way. Sometimes flattering is making your whole silhouette and body disappear. Sometimes flattering is layers so you cannot see what you look like but that is comfortable and when you're comfortable you are moving and talking and feeling more yourself and that is hot that is attractive the reason i think four is a great number to choose is because if some things are in the laundry and you don't have the option of putting them on you'll likely have other options but also you don't want to do too many because you don't want to be overwhelmed with choice 
on a day where your brain is already not its greatest. When I wake up hating myself and I put on one of these outfits, it's not like I instantly feel better. But the point of it is that I can look at myself and know that any bad thought I'm having is a lie. I've already predetermined that this outfit looks good. I already know that it is for me. It is perfect. It is who I want to be. And so if I put it on and I'm like, oh, I'm still ugly, it's a little smack. It's a little bit like, you literally know that's not true. It is one of your best outfits. Now go out there and slay the day. So yeah, try that out. Hopefully it helps. The next question says, favorite song right now? Ooh, there's been such good music coming out lately, but currently my favorite song is Crush by Ethel Kane. Honestly, I'm in love with a lot of Ethel Kane songs, but that particular one, when it's been this hot out and I have the window down, sunglasses on, dressed like a hoe, blasting Crush by Ethel Kane, I, I'm on top of the world, bitch. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? It really depends on how you measure that. I mean, like when I think back on life, one of the first things that comes to mind is flying to a different country for a long distance relationship when I was 18 or 19. It was a good trip overall, but it definitely could have been dangerous. And I have various little moments of that throughout my life with different travel, different people. But I don't know, I also lived with a roommate who we constantly had drug dealers in and out of the house and there was strangers high and like not just weed, other stuff. But I didn't try to get myself in that situation. I was just so low income that that was my only living option at the time. And then at the same time, it, my brain kind of goes, why does it have to be such physical extreme situations? Like some of the quote unquote craziest things I've done have regarded intimacy with different people. You know, like a few years back, I made friends with this homeless guy who like changed my life for a period of time. I, I would get him food and we would talk and stuff. And it went on for a lot of months and I learned a lot from him. And like, he was just a middle-aged guy. And I was a young girl and it like never felt like a bad situation. But if I were to say that people would be like, oh, are you endangering yourself? So like, yeah, I don't know. I think I have just done a lot of things in my life and some of them are classified as a bit out there or extreme, but I don't have a solid answer. I don't feel like one thing I've done has been extra out there. These kinds of experiences are just little parts in my life and none of them have an extreme amount of value more than the other ones. Everything is pretty well equal and balanced in my opinion. So yeah, I don't know. I hope examples are okay. New tattoo projects. I always have new tattoo projects. The thing is I have less money now than I have in a long time. So I don't know about any time too soon, but I do want to start on a lot of artist replication. I want a Keith Haring tattoo, a Jean-Michel Basquiat tattoo. I really hope you can't see the literal beads of sweat dripping down my face right now. I am dying. How did you learn to write so well? I want to refine my poetry skills, but haven't found a helpful teaching yet. I guess this kind of depends on what kind of poetry skills you're talking about. If you're talking about stylistically, prose, haikus, some sort of structured format, something rooted in tradition. I would say picking up some academic books as well as looking up the online resources you have access to and understanding the origins of those kinds of poems. You know, you can read them as well, but it is a part of understanding why this many syllables are used. Understanding why poems used to be about A, B, C. At the same time, if you're talking about poetry skills in terms of substance or content, that one comes a bit more with the practice of reading poetry. I'll insert a clip right now of what a lot of my poetry books look like. I annotate the shit out of everything. I will underline things, fold pages, sticky note them. It's not enough to just read poetry. You need to also figure out what poems are your favorite and why and reread them, dissect them. Let's say you read 10 poetry books and you go through all of your favorite poems in them and you realize a lot of them have a theme of, for example, family trauma. There's a reason you're gravitating towards that, so write about your own. Go inwards and see what kind of words and feelings you have on that. As another example, maybe you go through the poems and you realize you really like descriptive visual poetry. If that's the case, write down a huge list of words. Just every word that you think looks aesthetically pleasing or sounds audibly interesting. All words that have no relation to each other, verbs, nouns, anything that you like. 
and then turn those into poems. I'm just trying to improv right now, but let's say it's really hot outside and the sun is beating down on the sidewalk and you describe this as tangerine concrete. They're two very tactile, textured words, colored words that don't normally belong together, but work very poetically. If you're not used to doing descriptive poetry, it would be very hard to think of those two words together. But with a list laid out in front of you and having both of those two words somewhere on it, you know, trying to piece things together, trying to connect them, it makes that whole process a lot easier. So yeah, it really depends on what kind of poetry skills you're talking about. If it's more stylistically and technically, there are a lot of educational resources to look for. If it's more about emotion and content, a lot of it comes from reading poetry and observing what connects to you and why. There are quite a few more questions here, but I am actually dying right now. I am so sweaty and so I'm gonna answer one more and then go in a cold shower. Hi, what do you like doing that you don't share on video or Instagram? There's actually quite a lot of things that I don't mind sharing through conversation, but I don't think I'll ever document through pictures or videos. Um, one of those being Tai Chi. I've talked about it before. I'm studying Taoism. I have for months now and I do Tai Chi. I have a cool little outfit for it and I have little spots that I like doing it when it's not just in my house. Tai Chi has been really grounding for me and it is something I do only for me. I don't feel the need to show the way I do it or I don't feel like I am qualified to teach it. There's just no reason to post about it. I would say rollerblading is the same thing. I really like to do that leisurely. I love drinking wine in the evenings. That's not something I think I'll ever really <laughs> post about. I love going to the beach. You know, I might take some photos and videos on shore, but even with a waterproof camera, I would never take it into the water while I'm wet, while I'm swimming, whatever. All of these moments are so out of documentation for me. This sounds cheesy, but like these experiences come from my heart space. There's genuinely nothing to it other than it's a thing for me and only me. So yeah, that's the end of the q and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. I hope you stay cool during these hot months and I will see you some Wednesday or Thursday at some point. <laughs> Bye.